Welcome back to yet another episode. It's that time for another collection overview. 2020, the last time I did this was late 2018. I'm going to show you guys my updated horror Blu-ray collection, which is obviously behind me. I don't feel like wasting time today, so let's jump right into the collection. So here is the entire horror Blu-ray collection. Of course, I've got all other genres over there. But today we're looking at the horror. Now, I did one of these back when I ch when my channel started in 2018, uh, but it's about time for an update because I've acquired quite a bit since then. It's almost full down there, as you can see, in, in hell. Gotta love my trusty Sony speaker that's gonna serve as my stand. Let us take a look. As you guys know, I can't go through each and every one of these. I have a lot of videos on the channel where I do go over a lot of these and discuss and talk about each film in depth. But uh, yeah, so let us take a look. We've got a whole bunch of double features here, obviously. Bad Dreams, Visiting Hours, Darkness and Below. This one's hard to find, but not, uh, it's out of print, but not very expensive. Demonic, let's see, Food of the Gods and Frogs. Once Bitten and Love at First Bite, a little vampire comedy double feature there. It's an early Jim Carrey role. Mr. Sardonicus and Brotherhood of Satan. I actually have Brotherhood of Satan twice over now. It's also in the Psycho Circus here. It's a great set. I love the Creeping Terror or the Creeping Flesh. Um, Torture Garden, Brotherhood of Satan, all great. Just picked up Three from Hell recently, so looking forward to rounding out the zombie trilogy there, the Rob Zombie trilogy. I've heard mixed things about it. Happy birthday to me. Tentacles and Reptilicus, I think this one's out of print now. Got the 28 days later, 28 weeks later. Waiting for that 28 years later. Love this one, I actually prefer this one over the original. The editing, the frenetic pace to this one is incredible. 10 Cloverfield Lane, 31, a Rob Zombie film that I couldn't even get past the first act because I was getting nauseous because of the editing and action sequences. They were abysmal. 976 Evil, I believe that's going out of print now. 1408, some Harry House in there. Abominable MVD release, picked this up uh, somewhat recently. This one, I couldn't get into this the first time. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, keep it in the collection just because maybe one day. Afflicted, some found footage goodness there. We got the entire alien uh, thing at this point, the Quadrilogy, plus uh, Prometheus, Alien Covenant, AVP, double feature, Altered States, Ken Russell, big Ken Russell fan, love his work, wacky director, American Mary, liked this film quite a bit, but it kind of lost me in the third act, Rewatched American Psycho recently, this one I have a whole new love for, after learning a lot about philosophy and just uh, the world we live in over the last five, six years, uh, this one takes on a new meaning. American Werewolf in London. I know this has an Arrow release, which I would like. Same thing here. Scream Factory release. Angel Heart, Annabelle. Anatomy, a couple great German slashers here from the early 2000s. The Apparition, that's a new one that to the collection, but I've yet to check it out. Arachnophobia, ATM. That's one that I haven't even opened yet. Looking forward to checking this out. I'm a fan of these like little bottle movies, movies that take place all in one one area. Audrey Rose, Robert Wise, I'm still, I've, I've been bust, I've pulled this out like three or four times over the last month and I still haven't watched it. I have to check it out. Robert Wise doing a possession story, essentially. One of my favorite directors, Robert Wise. The Babadook, nice, uh, you know, Scream Factory here. If I could do this with one hand. I'm gonna break this. Oh, there we go. Pretty cool. Bad Milo, love that movie. Bad Moon, good werewolf flick. Bad Seed, still haven't seen it. Basket Case, love these movies. Frank Hennenlauter, one of my favorite directors, one of my inspirations <laughs> in my own writing and filmmaking. Belko Experiment, still haven't seen that. Ben! Still haven't seen Ben. The Beyond, one of my favorites of all time. I love The Beyond. Bigfoot, picked this up at like a dollar store or something. Danny Bonaducci in a Bigfoot movie. That's gonna be glorious. And of course, up here at the tippy top, we have the Godzilla set that won't fit anywhere else, obviously. And my glorious Hammer Horror set. A lot of these films are now being released um, by Scream Factory and other boutique labels, but that's a, a glimpse of what's on this set. I love this set. I picked this up years ago for like 70 bucks overseas before, I don't know, collecting got really big on YouTube, of course. Glorious Showa era Criterion Godzilla set there. We've got Bird with the Crystal Plumage. You, you'll probably notice a few of these releases in my collection here have been downgraded, sadly. 
Um, I had to move some things. Uh, you know, it's been a rough year. <laughs> yeah, we all could relate, I'm sure. Birdemic Bite, still a, still a film I have to check out. It's been compared to The Fly. It's supposed to have really gruesome effects. Full Cheese Black Cat, Black Christmas, Black Sabbath, Black Sunday. A whole bunch of great black films there. <laughs> black Swan, another good one. Blackula, now that's a great black black film. This is uh, Black Exploitation. Blackula and Scream Blackula Scream. Don't let the the goofy title fool you. They are some pretty damn good and creepy vampire flicks. Blair Witch, one of my favorites of all time. The Blob, not one of my favorites of all time, but you gotta have it in the collection. I prefer a film coming up in a few seconds here. Blood Trilogy, Herschel Gordon Lewis. I'd love to have that huge uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis set. But man, that thing I think is out of print now and expensive, at, at least expensive. Blood Sucking Freaks, this one's special to me because my buddy went to Dragon Con, I think, here in Raleigh. Some big convention in North Carolina. And he knew I was a big Troma and Lloyd Kaufman fan, so he got this signed for me. How awesome is that? Shout out to my boy Lauren. Thank you, buddy. Lloyd said, Magic Mike XOXOXOXO, Lloyd Kaufman. Blood Sucking Freaks. He really didn't have much to do with this film, <laughs> uh, but it's a Troma film. Uh, he at least produced it I'm sure so that is blood sucking freaks awesome I love the green case too don't you love that bloody birthday early Michael Dudikoff actually for my action heads out there early Michael Dudikoff uh, appearance I'll say blue velvet uh, body snatcher one of my favorites I absolutely adore this film still haven't cracked the blu-ray bone tomahawk the box brain damage Frank Hendelotter my favorite Hendelotter film Brain damage. The Brood. Bubba Hotep. One of my favorite Cronenberg films, by the way. Bubba Hotep. Buffy. Burial Ground. I still <sighs> gotta get into this film. I haven't fallen in love with it. So many people enjoy this movie, but um, a great slipcover. I'm not a slipcover guy or a hound, but that is a, that's how you do a slipcover right there. The Burning, one of the most underrated slashers of all time. Burnt Offerings. Tim Burton Collection there. Arguably not horror, but... Sleepy Hollow is. Bye Bye Man, Cabin in, Cabin in the Woods, of course. I think Drew Goddard has outdone himself with uh, Bad Times at El Royale, but uh, I do enjoy Cabin in the Woods. Cabin Fever, I love this movie. My favorite Eli Roth movie by far. In fact, the only Eli, Eli Roth movie I enjoy. <laughs> Cabin and Dr. Caligari, still haven't seen this film. I know, it's, it saddens me. I love my silent horror film collection, by the way. You'll see a bunch of them in this video. Kaltiki! The Superior Blob film from Italy, Mario Bava. <laughs> Love that movie. Candyman, such great memories with this film. Well, awful, terrifying memories with this film growing up in the 90s, but, you know, it's all good now. Cannibal Holocaust, classic, but not the best found footage and not the best horror movie out there. The Car, basically a car, uh, basically Jaws on wheels, and it's damn good. I love this movie, very underrated. All the Carrie movies there. Actually, this is the original, and then you got the remake and Carrie Rage 2, Angela Bettis remake. Castle Free Cat of Nine Tales. This is uh, one of the limited edition arrows I have here still, out of print now. Cat People, The Cell. Like this uh, Tarsum Singh movie quite a bit, very visual. I miss him. I, I wish he would still be making these really visual, ethereal films, Tarsum Singh, but it uh, doesn't look like he's getting much work these days, which sucks. Changeling, this is beautiful, out of print now. Oh, this is just glorious, man. I This is so, this is one of my favorite 80s movies. So, so underrated. This is quintessential haunted house films. It's so damn good. Watched this recently. Pretty good, pretty good. Draft House release there. Chucky collection, of course. All but the new one. I'll get the new one when it comes out, but I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of it. I wasn't crazy about it. But I'm a completionist. Speaking of completionist, these are out of order. Uh, Children of the Corn, of course. I've got the others on DVD. I don't think all those are on Blu-ray yet. The Children. Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Early Bob Clark movie there. Really cool. Early 70s, actually. Chopping Mall, Christine, Christmas Evil, City of the Dead. I love this movie. 1960. This was done by the guys who founded uh, Amicus, but before they founded Amicus. This is 1960. Class of 84, Clown. Really good uh, demon clown film there. Collector. I've seen the first one, not the second one. I've heard good things about the second one, though. Come Out and Play, I believe this is a remake of a Spanish film from the 70s about children in this village who are terrorizing this couple. I, I forget what the name of the movie is. Company of Wolves, The Conjuring 1 and 2, love those movies. And Count Yorga Collection, 1 and 2 by Arrow. The Craft, love The Craft, 90s as hell. Awesome movie, awesome witchcraft movie. The Crazies, I enjoy both versions of The Crazies. 
Hey, Arnie. <laughs> We've got The Creeps. Uh, this one's questionable. Full Moon Charles Band production here. Uh, little people as deformed monsters. Hmm. <laughs> Creep Show. David Cronenberg. Early, uh, early, early works here. Got glare all over the place. From the Drain. Stereo Crimes of the Future. Transfer. Cujo. Dagon. I love Dagon. One of the best Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraftian films out there. Dark Angel. One of my favorite Dolph Lundgren movies. Great movie. Definitely more of an action flick, but it does have some horror and sci-fi elements. Kind of slasher elements. Dark Angel, weird-ass Full Moon movie. I love Full Moon. I'm a, I'm a big fan of... I don't know. They're my, like, fall-asleep movies sometimes. <laughs> Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, great 70s TV movie. Dark Water, an interesting Italian horror film from the 90s. I couldn't really get into this one. A lot of atmosphere, though. A very weird, you know, very cool, but couldn't really get into it. Daughters of Darkness, Daybreakers, The Dead, Dead Before Dawn. I gotta pick up the pace here. Dead and Buried, one of my favorites. Just picked this up recently on the Arrow sale. Dead Next Door, Dead Ringers, Dead Shack. It's a dead shack. Dead Snow, Dead Snow, Dead, dead Beat at Dawn. That'll do it for all my dead movies. Look at that. That's ridiculous. The dead movies. Yeah. Not, not Romero's dead movies. Deadly Blessing. And then we got, of course, Death. Whole bunch of death, because I, I like death. Death Valley, Death Dream. Oh, I'm so glad this came to Blu-ray. I love this movie. It's basically the monkey's paw story, but it is so well told by frickin' Bob Clark, man. One of the most diverse directors ever. Lost him too soon. Deathgasm, hell. <laughs> Deep Red, some great giallo goodness by Argento. Deliver Us From Evil, haven't seen. Demon Sea, Demon Wind, a really cool, obscure uh, Evil Dead knockoff. But it, it does have more going for it. It has some... It takes some twists and turns with the lore. It's really cool. Uh, 1984 film here, Demon Wind. Demonic Toys, more Full Moon. Descent, of course, Demons. The Devil's Reign. Look at that cover. They don't, they don't draw them like that anymore, bruh. Doctor and the Devils. It's a Birkin Hare story there. Devil's Rejects. Uh, Dog Soldiers. Everybody loves this film. I do not. Can't get into it, but I don't want to get it out, of, get rid of it essentially because. It's a Scream Factory, and it's a werewolf movie. Maybe one day. I've tried two or three times. I can't get into the characters. Effects are great, don't get me wrong, but ah, the story is paper thin, and the characters are wafer thin. Uh, don't Be Afraid of the Dark archive collection here from the 70s. 70s TV movie, more Full Moon Doll Man. Don't Breathe, Don't Look Now, Criterion goodness here. Donald Sutherland. I almost, I, I want all of the Criterion horror movies. I think I'm... Closing in on getting all of them on Blu-ray. Don't Torture a Duckling. Some more silent era stuff. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. John Barrymore. All the Dracula movies here, you know. Dracula, Dan Curtis. We got uh, Universal's Langella. Bram Stoker with Gary Oldman. Dracula 2000 here. Gerard Butler as the Dra as Dracula. And the second attempt to revive the dark universe, uh, the Universal Monsters. I like this film. It's not great, but... I understand why it didn't do well, but I don't hate it. Drag Me to Hell, one of the more underrated Sam Raimi films, in my opinion. The Editor, The Entity, I just watched this recently. Excellent possession story. Great, great movie by Sidney J. Fury. His best film that I've seen by far. Loved The Entity. Underrated little 80s, you know, ex post-exorcist movie there. Escape from Tomorrow, this one was shot on location in Disney World, which is interesting, Dis without Disney World's permission. Evil Dead movies, of course, Army of Darkness, I absolutely adore, so nostalgic for. Evil Dead 2, one of the greatest films ever, in my opinion. Love Event Horizon there. Evil Speak, the, the remake here, wasn't crazy about, gotta be honest, but yeah. The originals, hell yeah. Excision, love this movie. One of my favorites from last decade. Just missed my honorable mentions, actually. I, d I did mention this in that video, though, at the end. I had to sneak it in. We got The Exorcist Collection, which, to my surprise, is out of print now. The anthology there with all the Exorcist films. The Eye, the remake with Jessica Alba. Eyes of Laura Mars. This is actually an early Carpenter script here, directed by Irvin Kirshner. I've yet to see it, but... That's an indicator release. Uh, Eyes Without a Face. There's some more Criterion. The Fan, Durfan, a.k.a. The Trance. God almighty, I love this movie. This is, my second viewing is going to solidify this as one of my favorites of all time. Super influential to me in my writing as well. Faust, another Murnau sh uh, silent horror film there. Fear with Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg. The Final Destination movies, can't go wrong with those. All right, I can get off my stool now. Going down to the Fs. The Fs. Hey, Arnie. Final Exam. Haven't seen it. Final Girls. Uh, yeah, that was a good one. 
<laughs> this character cracked me up. This guy right there. Firestarter. Haven't seen that movie in years. Love this one. Lou Diamond Phillips, The First Power. Hell yeah. I think this is actually a Kino release, but it doesn't have any Kino branding. Yeah, Kino Lorber. There it is. I missed this one on my Kino collection video. Flatliners. Flora picked that up a few months ago when we were still able to hunt for movies. This is a independent sci-fi horror flick where nature strikes back. I've Heard eh, mixed things about it. I'm willing to give it a try, though. Flowers in the Attic, the Fly movie, or, you know, the original Fly, and the Cronenberg's remake here. This actually has the other two, if I could do this with one hand, two Fly movies in there, Curse of the Fly, Return of the Fly. They're not on Blu-ray, but uh, I put them all in the Blu-ray set here. Carpenter's The Fog, The Fourth Kind. Still haven't seen that. Uh, I'm not anticipating too much. This is such an underrated 2000s movie, early 2000s movie here, Frailty, directed by the the late Bill Paxton, the late great Bill Paxton, starring um, him and McConaughey. This is just fantastic, man. Check this movie out if you haven't seen it. It tackles uh, religious themes, familial issues. It is just so damn good and twisty. The twist these days, I'm sure a lot see coming, but it's still so good. Bunch of Frankenstein, well not a bunch, but a couple Frankenstein movies. Frankenhooker there, of course. Uh, this one just falls short for me every time I watch it, sadly. Not this one, though. This is fantastic. <laughs> Friday 13th collection there. All, or not all movies, but uh, the first eight. Freddy vs. Jason, of course, one of my favorites out of the whole out of the whole franchise. From Dust Till Dawn, From Hell It Came, another Warner archive. Gotta love that cover. It's about a killer tree. I've yet to see it. Frozen, a good Adam Green film. Probably his best. I like the Hatchet movies, but this Frozen, um, just a great tight th thriller, bottle thriller. Awesome. Fulci, this has uh, City of the Living Dead, House by the Cemetery, and New York Ripper. I've seen all of those and enjoy all of them, except for New York Ripper. Wasn't a huge fan of that one. Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah, this cover brings me back, man. This was the VHS I, grew, I had growing up in the 90s, and I watched till the tape ran out. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, not so much now, but I still appreciate it for its uh, insanity. <laughs> Get Out, Ghostbusters... Uh, the Ghoul, 30s, early 30s with Boris Karloff, around the time he was doing Frankenstein and all the Universal movies, but this one gets uh, lost in, in the fray of all of that, so check out The Ghoul. Ginger Snaps, A Girl Walks Alone at Midnight. The Gollum, this is actually a recent pickup of mine, adding to the silent horror collection, rounding that out nicely. Graduation Day, Grapes of Death, a great Jean Roland film, the only one that I've seen. Green Inferno, ugh, God, I watched this a couple weeks ago, not a, still not a fan of Eli Roth. <laughs> this one is a piece of shit. Green Room, uh, this is not a piece of shit. This is one of the best films of all time, one of the most suspenseful films of all time. I love, love Green Room. I almost fell. The Green Slime! I think I did that last time. This has a killer theme song. This is actually uh, Kinji Fukasaku, I think. Yep, Kinji Fukasaku, who would later do... Battle Royale. The Grudge, this one is directed by the original director, Takashi Shimizu. Solid film, a solid remake there. Gruesome Twosome, that's a uh, newly added to the collection there, Herschel Gordon Lewis. Halloween movies, of course. Uh, I've got the directors, producers, whatever, cut, it doesn't matter. The film still sucks. What's it, number six? Uh, not a big fan of the Halloween franchise after three. I gotta be honest. I like four, but onward, I. Uh, I could have some fun with them, but I don't think they're great. I think Friday the 13th franchise is better. I think Nightmare is better. I know I think a lot of you are going to disagree. Obviously, this is a classic. Two is great as well. Three is my favorite. That's right. Season of the Witch is my favorite. Now here, it's a little out of order, it may seem, but this is all Hammer. So all Hammer horror going right up there to Vampire Lovers. Incredible. I'm so grateful to have all these on, on Blu-ray. So many great films here. I love both of these films to death. Some of them I haven't seen, the uh, sealed ones. Seen all these though. Oh, my favorite has to be The Mummy from 1959. Christopher Lee, Terrence Fisher, and Peter Cushing. Uh, just wonderful stuff. Uh, so many great films. I could talk about this in a whole video, and I have. So check out my Hammer Horror Collection. The Happening. Yes, I do like The Happening. I, I I think Shyamalan was setting out to make a bad movie. Nobody agrees with me, though. Uh, Mr. Shyamalan, if you're out there. Hardware, super out of print now. I still have fun with this movie. I'm not a crazy fan, though. Harryhausen double feature. Haunted Castle, another new addition to the collection. My silent horror collection. Awesome. I didn't know it was on Blu-ray. Got this for like seven bucks on eBay, and I sold my copy for like ten. Haunter, you know, one of my 
one of the, the directors that I wish would get more work, Vincenzo Natale. Uh, he did Haunter here. He did uh, Cube. He did Splice. Just a lot of weird films, man. I, and he just doesn't get work anymore, sadly. As we descend into the depths, we've got Haunting in Connecticut, my home state. Heard this is pretty bad. Still want to check it out, though, because it's Connecticut and it has... Elias Codius. So, <laughs> those are my reasons. Haksan oh, recently uh, picked this up, sold off my DVD, and got this for basically nothing. Can't wait to see this. I haven't seen it. This one I know is going to turn into one of my favorites. This is another one in my horror, my silent horror collection here on Blu-ray. So grateful that this is even uh, it still exists. This film. So, The Hearse. Um, never hear anybody talk about this one, but still haven't opened it. Vinegar Syndrome. Hell Driver. One of those crazy, wacky... Yeah, Nishimura. I think he does a lot of these crazy ones. Like, well, there's a few more down that way. Machine Girl, things like that. The Arrow uh, Trilogy, Hellraiser 1, 2, 3. And then, of course, uh, the next four. This one's somewhere in there, too. There's a lot of them now. I've I've only seen the first three, I gotta admit. But I am interested in the, uh, in the rest of them. <laughs> Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Excellent, excellent movie. Such a great character study. Michael Rooker has never been better, in my opinion. Uh, he's great, but he's never been better than Henry. Hills Have Eyes 1, 2, and 3. That's right, Mind Ripper is also known colloquially as Hills Have Eyes 3. Um, his uh, Wes Craven's son wrote it. Wes Craven produced it, but it really doesn't have much to do with Hills Have Eyes. Hitchhike here, um, a Franco Nero film that I have not seen. More of a thriller, I think, but um, it fits into the horror. Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers recently <laughs> discovered that that was out of print. Hostel 1 and 2, eh. House, house, house. The American House, House Two, House Three: The Horror Story, and House Four. Recently got this in the Arrow sales. This was awesome to pick up for like twenty-five bucks on sale. House of a Thousand Corpses, House of the Devil, a whole bunch of house movies. House on Sorority Row, House on Wa House of Wax 3D. This also has Mystery of the Wax Museum, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Even though that just got an archive collection Blu-ray release, which I'd like, because I don't think this is HD. Mystery of the Wax Museum isn't. It's just like a bonus feature. House of Wax remake. I don't mind that one. I kind of like it, actually. House of Whipcord, Pete Walker film I haven't seen. Howling, Human Centipede. I thought I had the whole trilogy, but I guess I don't. I'm missing the first, sadly. I... <laughs> Not a fan of the first movie. I like the second movie. I'm curious about this one. Couple Hunchback movies. We've got 1923 Lon Chaney Hunchback of Notre Dame film here by Flickr Alley. They do remarkable work. I have a few of their releases. I want all of their releases because they are true cinematic spelunkers, man. They dig in the crates to find these films and bring them to us in beautiful restoration. So this is actually the the um, Charles Lawton Hunchback of Notre Dame. What's it? 1940. What's it, 39 RKO version. Haven't seen that one actually. I am Omega, sort of Mark Dacascos' version of I am Legend. I like this one. It's okay. It's not bad. Um, comparable, I guess, to Will Smith's. I Drink Your Blood. One of my favorite 70s horror films. 1970. This was a controversial film for the time. Uh, one of the earlier gore films, you know, not not focused 100% on the gore, but it's trippy, it's hip, trippy dippy, hippie shit. I love it. It is awesome. And if you could see up there, there's Mickey and my Sega Master System, that syringe came with I Drink Your Blood <laughs> as like a promo item, which is funny. And you gotta love the Grindhouse releasing, man. I wish they did more work, but they put, they put so much love and effort into each release that it makes sense that they don't do more because this is just an incredible release here. Both I Spit on Your Grave movies, the original and remake, haven't seen either, actually. Not a huge fan of that, that subgenre. Love this subgenre, though, the late 90s, early 2000s slashers. Late 90s in this case here. I Saw the Devil. That's Chan Wook Park. I Saw What You Did. This is William Castle, uh, directed, and Joan Crawford. Ichi the Killer. I saw this back when I was a kid, but haven't seen it in years. Mouth of Madness, one of Carpenter's more underrated flicks, in my opinion. Incredible Melting Man. I adore this film. The first new horror creature. Check out my riff review on this one. It, I adore it so much that I had to do a riff review. Innocence, more Criterion goodness there. Inside, this is obviously not an American release here, but it was the only way I can get it on Blu-ray. It does have... Uh, the French track and English subtitles, so that's why I picked it up. Insidious movies, I've seen the first three, love the first two. James Wan directed, not a big fan of Wan-El's third, and haven't seen the fourth. Uh, Intruder, 
great late 80s slasher by uh, Sp- Scott Spiegel. Scott Spiegel helped Sam Raimi with the Evil Dead movies, helped write them, or at least Evil Dead 2. Invaders from Mars, this one is supremely out of print, going for a ton of money now. Toby Hooper. Invasion of the Body Snatchers films, this one is my favorite. I do love this one though. Invitation, Draft House release, awesome. Uh, these two are actually Island of Dr. Moreau movies. Uh, this one is Charles Lawton in Island of Lost Souls. I love this movie. This is, might be my favorite version of this. Nice brisk 70 minutes, 1932. It is wonderful. Love that cover too. Island of Terror, little unknown British uh, Peter Cushing horror flicks, horror sci-fi flick from the 60s. It, it, it. <laughs> you know, I I do like this film, but the second one I, I feel the second one I dislike so much that I feel like it's going to affect how I feel about the first chapter. This one I'm super nostalgic for, of course. It came from outer space, which I think is kind of it came from out. Didn't it actually in the book come from outer space? Anyway, it follows nice steel book that I just kind of happened upon. Uh, didn't set out to get the steel book. I, I never really set out to get steel books, but if I stumble upon them, great. Loved it follows. This is Great Vinegar Syndrome release here, Jack Frost. Jacob's Ladder, love it. Haven't seen the Jaws sequels, actually. Love Jacob's Ladder. Oh, so good. Another one I love, Black Exploitation Horror at its finest, honestly. This is so goddamn good and well well produced, well directed, such a cool, unique idea. Ah, it's about this guy. It's essentially about this this young kid who gets possessed by the soul of an old African-American gangster from the 30s. It is so damn cool. Jeepers Creepers, still love the movies, don't love the director. (laughs) Student Bodies and Dr. Jekyll and Hyde together again. Never seen that one. I really more so picked it up for Student Bodies. Jennifer's Body, haven't seen that either. Joyride, great little uh, killer trucker movie. Just Before Dawn, underrated, not, uh, this is an untalked about slasher, it's not really underrated, it's a solid one from the late 70s, but it's not great. Kingdom of the Spiders, love this movie. (laughs) Uh, This is such a 70s movie, it's, eh, nothing like this could ever be made again, because they used real tarantulas. So this movie's insane, and it's the most Shatner Shatner's ever been. Knock Knock, uh, Kolobos recently picked this one up. It's like real world meets Suspiria or something, so I'm in. Lair of the White Worm, super strange Ken Russell film, but then again, which Ken, what Ken Russell films aren't super strange? This is one of his weirdest, though, most bizarre. It, it's, it's odd. I think it was based on a Bram Stoker novel. The Last House on the Left films, again, not the hugest fan of the subgenre of, like, you know, young women getting raped and then possibly seeking revenge. Not in this case, though. I I get its importance and its exploitative importance, but I just can't really get into the genre. This one I love. Still haven't seen it on Blu-ray. Uh, this is... Who's the director here? Anthony de Blasi. Yeah, this guy, someone to look out for. He makes some solid and fun 80s throwback, early 90s throwback movie uh, horror flicks. So I really enjoyed Last Shift. Kind of blew me away, actually. Lazarus Effect, haven't seen. Hannibal Lecter Collection. This has Manhunter, Silence of the Lambs, and Hannibal. Obviously, Silence of the Lambs is the best of that bunch. Uh, Legend of Hell House, the Leprechaun series, Let Us Pray, not a bad one, not a bad movie. I love the Leprechaun series, by the way. Let the Right One In and the American Remake. I haven't seen the American Remake. Uh, I think it's Matt Reeves before he did the Planet of the Apes movies. And Let the Right One In, the Swedish film, is fantastic. Leviathan, Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane. I love that title and I love that poster art. Little Shop of Horrors Digibook, great movie. Jean Roland, I haven't seen there. Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, also known as Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Love this film. One of the most underrated zombie flicks ever. Lord of Illusions, Clive Barker, another steelbook, Lords of Salem. I like this Rob Zombie film quite a bit. A couple of Lost Boys movies. Nothing will ever surpass the classic Joel Schumacher legend of a film. I love this movie. Just makes me feel, I don't know, feel like a kid again growing up in the early 90s and 90s. Uh, The Machinist, Brad Anderson film. Mad Monster Party, I'm ashamed to say I haven't seen that one yet. Magic Mama, The Man Who Laughs. This is another um, Flickr Alley release, obviously. The Man Who Laughs inspired The Joker, the aesthetic of The Joker. This is just phenomenal to own on Blu-ray. 1928, The Man Who Laughs with Conrad Vate. Mandy, love Mandy, what a fever dream of a film. Martyrs, divisive as hell, one of the most controversial films ever, but a film I really enjoyed. I, well, enjoy is a is a strong word. I I experienced it, <laughs> and I felt like I got something from it. So it was it was an experience, man. Take heed with martyrs. The American 
uh, release of this I sold years ago for like a hundred bucks and bought this for like 10 because it's almost identical. Maximum Overdrive, hell yeah, love that fucking cover right there. Mimic, Mega Piranha, yeah I have some shit in my collection. Mirrors, a uh, Aja film which I still haven't seen, I'm interested in it though. I've heard mixed things, I've heard it has one infamous scene though. <laughs> you guys have, that's, have seen it probably know what I'm talking about. <coughs> Misery! Mist, one of the most kick you in the nuts endings ever. This has the uh, black and white version here by Frank Darabont, of course. I do want to see the black and white one. I think it's going to be really cool. <laughs> I love when movies do like the black and white cut on the same disc. That's great. Mom and Dad, ugh, wasn't a big fan of this one. Half the team from cr the crap, the crap movies, the, the crap. I can't speak, from the Crank movies uh, with Jason Statham. Wasn't a fan of that one, despite having Nick Cage. Mommy, sort of the Bad, Se Bad Seed sequels. My Bloody Valentine Monster Squad. Mortuary, couldn't get into that one. This is a weird movie, Moon Trap with Bruce Campbell and Walter Koenig. Mother, one of my favorites of all time. I absolutely adore this beautiful poem of a film. Motel Hell, <laughs> not a poem of a film, but a wonderful sleazy early 80s horror flick. I love this bad boy. It's so cool. Takes all kind of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. Mother's Day, still haven't seen that. I believe that's trauma. Motivational Growth is one I have to check out. I've heard it compared to Henenlotter's work. Of course, I've got the Nova release of Mr. Vampire here. Uh, Chinese horror uh, mixed with martial arts. It is fantastic. Hopping Vampires, man. I love it so much. One of my favorites. One of my favorite vampire films, hands down. Wes Craven, one of his weaker films. One of his last films, sadly. Rest in peace, homie. Paul Nashi Collections, one and two here. Haven't even cracked into the second one yet. Near Dark, Catherine Bigelow's Near Dark, one of the most underrated vampire flicks ever made in my opinion. All right, as we descend further and further, we have Necromantic 1 and 2, the old family-friendly classics. The Nest, New Kids on the Block, bloody bloody blue uh, New Daughter, a little underrated Kevin Costner horror flick there. I liked it. Night of the Creeps, Night of the Comet, Night of the Demons, Night of the Demons 2, Night of the Demons Remake, Night Has a Thousand Desires. Is this just Franco? I don't know. I don't know. Yep, it's Jess Franco, so I'm assuming I'm not going to like this movie. Oh, nah, I love Night of the Demons, by the way. I skipped over it. I adore this film. One of my favorite 80s horror films. <laughs> Night of the Living Dead. We've got the entire Dead Ro Romero Dead collection here. Night of the Living Dead by Criterion. Dawn of the Dead. This is still out of print and hasn't gotten a proper release yet, which drives me crazy. This has gotten a proper release by Scream Factory. Thank you. Land of the Dead. Diary of the Dead. Survival of the Dead. I enjoy Land and Survival can't get down with Diary. As a found footage fan, that film offends me. Dawn of the Dead remake, Zack Snyder, great stuff. Oh, my arms are so tired. Ah. Working on the night watch. Nope, that's night, night moves, but this is a good movie. Nightmare on Elm Street, the entire collection. I love these movies. Probably my favorite out of the big three in terms of franchises. Friday, Halloween, Nightmare is my favorite. Freddy Krueger is the man. Demon man guy thing. Don't like this one though. I think this is a piece of shit. Ninth Gate. Ah, oh, such an underrated Roman Polanski film. Not a fan of the human being, but he made some great films, especially in the horror genre. Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Every time I say that now, I, I just think of Martin. I don't know. Martin was seared into my mind as a, as a, <laughs> as a younger man. So Nosferatu. F.W. Murnau's classic. This is such a great film. Holds up remarkably well and is still scary because of Max Schreck's performance. Or was it? Oculus, a good Mike Flanagan movie there. Of Unknown Origin, a great uh, George Cosmatos movie there about a, a giant rat that is plaguing Peter Weller in this Manhattan apartment. It's awesome. Old Dark House, which is the film James Whale did right after Frankenstein. Nobody really talks about the Old Dark House, though, and I think this is one of the first examples of a horror comedy, or at least a self-aware horror comedy. And it's also an early example of a whole bunch of people getting stuck in this creepy weird house with a whole bunch of weird people in it. Great movie. Check this out if you haven't seen it. And yes, that is Karloff there. The Omen, one of the worst packaging devices I've ever seen, but it does have three Omen films and the remake. Not sure why it has the remake and not the fourth Omen film, but I have that on DVD, so whatever. One Dark Night, Code Red release, great movie. I haven't seen the Blu-ray yet. Watched this recently. One of Robin Williams' best performances as a sociopath 
creeper. Oh, man, it is so good. Onibaba. Still haven't watched this on Blu-ray but by Eureka, but I loved this movie when I saw it. When I had it on DVD, Orphan, one of my good friends, Adam. What up, Adam? Ruined the ending to this movie. I hate you, Adam. The Others, of course. This is a classic. I love this movie. And it came out around the time of Sal... Um, Sal... The hell am I even talking about anymore? Sixth Sense, and I think it got overshadowed by the twist in Sixth Sense, because this has a killer twist too, but a lot of people compared it to Sixth Sense because it came around the same time. Unfairly compared, I should say. The Ouija movies, I haven't seen the original, but Ouija 2, Mike Flanagan's Ouija 2 is awesome. <laughs> Loved it. Pandorum, a little underrated Dennis Quaid and Ben Foster sci-fi horror film. Nobody really talks about that one. Paranormal Activity movies, I'm missing three. Three and the ghost dimension, I think? My favorite so far, either the first one or marked ones. I really like the fresh take of this one. I like the characters. I like the supernatural elements. I thought it was cool. And found footage was done really well. One of my favorite Wes Craven films, People Under the Stairs, Pet Cemetery, The Phantasm Collection. This one is not cheap anymore. I'm gonna take it down for you guys to take a look at here. Aww. Even though this piece is not cooperating. Yeah, buddy, the phantasm ball. Look at how trippy that is. Yeah, yeah, look at that. And of course, this does have all five films in it. My favorite being number one. The first phantasm is one of my favorite films of all time. Donald Coscarelli did almost everything to produce that film by himself. It's incredible. I love, love, love phantasm. Phantom Carriage, more... Uh, silent Horror there from Criterion. Phase 4, more Silent Horror actually. Phantom of the Opera, Lon Janey. Phase 4, underrated Saul Bass film. I believe the only film Saul Bass directed. He's known for all the great Hitchcock artwork and the man with the golden arm and a whole bunch of stuff that Saul Bass did the graphic design for. Phase 4 is awesome. It's about ants taking over the world. That's right. Phenomena, Argento, Pieces. I still haven't cracked the Blu-ray. I saw this on a shoddy DVD years and years ago and fell in love with the wackiness that is Pieces. This is uh, Piquer Simon, Juan Piquer Simon, the director. Roger Corman's Piranha, the remake of Piranha, Ale Ex Ale Aja, uh, Pit in the Pendulum, Stuart Gordon, obviously based on the Edgar Allan Poe short. Planet Terror, Planet of the Vampires, Bava, love this movie. The Poltergeist movies, of course, of course. I love Poltergeist 2, um, but I really love Poltergeist 1, of course. Haven't seen 3 yet, Popcorn. Love Popcorn, little slasher that takes place in a movie theater with Jill Sholin, one of my favorite scream queens of the 80s. An actor who does not get enough talk is one of the great scream queens of the 80s and in B movies at least. Possession, one of my prized possessions, but I have to cover it up because there's tits and serpents and Lovecraft. I love this movie, such a great Lovecraftian tale here. Released by Mondo Vision. The only Mondo Vision release I think I have. That's spectacular, though. Poultry Guys, my favorite Lloyd Kaufman film, I believe. Such a great movie about killer chickens at a fast food restaurant. Chickens that come back from the dead. Predator, of course, all or the three Predator movies. The fourth one, I'll own at some point. Wasn't a fan of that one, sadly. The Vincent Price collections, Scream Factory put out. I believe they're all out of print now. This goes for hundreds and hundreds of dollars, which is f***ing crazy and ridiculous. And worth it, because this set is remarkable. All the movies on the back there. Same thing here. Even, arguably even better. And the third one, by far the weakest. But still great because I love Vincent Price. Prom Night, Prophecy, Frankenheimer, love this movie. The Prophecy with Christopher Walker, love the first one, second one's good, third one's all right, and then I haven't seen the last two. Psycho, love the first one, I might even like the second one more, I know, blasphemy, but I loved the second one, it blew me away. Such an underrated sequel, honestly. Pulse, pick this up. Years ago, it was very cheap, and I had seen the movie on DVD, so I upgraded. Pumpkinhead, Puppet Master, the first one. The Purge, the th first three Purge movies. I enjoy the first one. I love the second one. Haven't seen the third one or beyond. The Pyramid, <laughs> picked this up at the dollar store recently. Fell asleep watching it. It's pretty bad. Cue the Winged Serpent, Larry Cohen. I love Larry Cohen's work, especially when he directs. He wrote a lot of movies that you probably know and love, but he directed a shit ton in the 70s and 80s, and I love almost all of them that I've seen. My favorite being the one that's coming up soon, somewhere around here. Quiet Family. This is another Nova release. This is Jun Bong Ho, early Jun Bong Ho, doing a horror comedy. Queen of the Damn Quiet Ones, Rabid. 
Cronenberg, Rawhead Rex, great Kino release here of Clive Barker's story. He didn't direct that one, though. Reanimator and Bride of the Reanimator. I had to downgrade my Reanimators um, from the limited edition arrows to these regular editions. Ah, times is hard, man. Wreck, one of my favorite found footage films of all time. Check out my 50 found footage films ranked that I did. 50 horror found footage films. I ranked them all. It was a crazy video, and it's long. Red Dragon, Red Lights, The Reef, The Relic, Peter Hyams. I really am a fan of this movie. I loved it when I was a kid. Growing up in the 90s, I was like 10 when I saw this, and I fell in love with it. Still like it to this day. It has its problems, like not being able to see much at certain scenes. Repulsion, another Polanski Criterion horror film that I've yet to see. Resident, only reason I have this is because it is technically a Hammer film. It's not part of their glorious run. But it's Hammer Productions, one of the first that they did when they resurfaced. All the Resident Evil movies with Mila Jovovich. I love Paul W.S. Anderson's work and these movies. I could watch them over and over and over again, and I do. The CG movies are a blast, too. If you want to just turn your brain off, these Resident Evil movies are a great waste of time. I love those movies. The Resurrected, great Dan O'Bannon film there. Return of the Living Dead, another great Dan O'Bannon film there. The only two that he ever directed, sadly. Lloyd Kaufman, Trauma, Rigor Mortis, a great modern Zhang Shi movie, which is the Chinese vampire. There are a lot of elements going on in this one, but a Chinese vampire is one of the elements. <laughs> it's a very cool flick. The Ring, still love the American remake more than the original, actually. I do like the original, though. Underrated little Anthony Hopkins chiller here. Uh, he plays a priest, and there's some possessions going on. It's cool. It's cool. Robo Geisha. This is another one of those uh, crazy films like Machine Girl and stuff like that that I really haven't broken into that genre yet. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Haven't seen the film yet. I know. I know. George A. Romero's Between Night and Dawn. This has the crazies. There's always vanilla and Season of the Witch, along with a nice little book. Rosemary's Baby. Again, Polanski. Salem Witch Trials. Don't know much about that one, to be honest, but I got it, like, really, really cheap, like 50 cents a long time ago. Salem's Lot, of course, uh, 70s, Toby Hooper, the TV miniseries. All of the Saw movies here, I've only seen up to three, and I couldn't even stomach three, so uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun going through these movies. <laughs> Scanners, not the greatest David Cronenberg film, but a film I still do enjoy. How can you go wrong with that head explosion? Scout's Guide, good movie. Scream movies, love almost pretty much all of these movies. Three is lackluster, but I love one, two, and four. One being my favorite, super nostalgic for it. Session 9, a film that everybody seems to love. I like it quite a bit. It's a very solid, Shining-inspired Brad Anderson chiller that takes place in an uh, an abandoned insane asylum. Really cool, but um, don't love it as much as everybody else. Sergeant Kabuki Man, Sharknado movies. I haven't seen these yet, believe it or not. Shaun of the Dead, recent addition to the collection, believe it or not. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Shivers, Shock 'em Dead. I don't know anything about this movie, honestly. Shock Treatment. I've heard this is sort of the spiritual successor to Rocky Horror Picture Show. Is that right? Yeah, maybe. Shocker. Shutter Island. I like this uh, Martin Scorsese movie quite a bit. Okay, we have two more shelves to go. Starting right here, Silent House. This is an American remake of a Spanish film or Peruvian or something like that where it was all done in one take. I want to see the original. I've heard the remake is not quite there. Sinister 1 and 2, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I wasn't a huge fan of the first Sinister by Scott Derrickson. The second one looks pretty cool, though. It looks more my speed, so we'll check that out at some point. Skeleton Key, really like this uh, New Orleans, Louisiana bayou sort of horror story, ghost story. Underrated, underrated early 2000s horror flick here. I really enjoy the Skeleton Key. Great characters, great twists, and a great lead performance there by Kate Hudson. The Sleepaway Camp movies, I love the first two. Haven't seen the third. I think these two are now out of print, actually, by Scream. Sleepwalkers. Cat People, Stephen King movie, not great. Society, I had to downgrade this one too from the limited edition. Sadly, I loved that limited edition. Uh, maybe one day I'll get it back. Still grateful to own this in any capacity on Blu-ray. I, Society's one of my favorites. I watched this actually with a couple buddies recently and it was a doozy. Sorority Babes and the Slime Bolarama. Great title, fun movie. Species, oh man, I have stories about this, seeing this on the, at the VHF, you know, the video store back in the 90s, and my mom would not let me rent it because it had a pretty much naked woman on the front. But mom, it's science fiction! <laughs> she wasn't listening. Spider Baby, one of my favorite 60s horror comedies ever. This is one of the most underrated horror comedies and really set the groundwork 
for so many to come after. This is Jack Hill, who's known for black exploitation films like uh, Foxy Brown, actually. Spider Baby is just remarkable. Lon Chaney in the twilight of his career. Great characters. Uh, Sid Haig is in this. Rest in peace. Oh, just such a great movie, man. Squirm. Stage Fright. The This is a remake, actually, of the... Who did that? Michael Suave film from the 80s, Aquarius. Stir of Echoes, another good, uh, solid, solid uh, little ghost story here. Stoker, couldn't really get into this Chanwook Park movie. Eh, maybe maybe the next time. I think I went in with different expectations. Street Trash, love this movie. It has a scene where a severed penis is thrown about like a football. Street Trash, bitch. Student Bodies, <laughs> okay, so I guess I have this twice. I guess I have this for the Jekyll Hyde together again, and then this olive release of student bodies for student bodies. I don't know, man. Still haven't seen the movie, honestly. One of my favorites, The Stuff. I haven't watched this on Blu-ray yet, sadly. I caught this on streaming, rewatched it a couple years ago, and of course I watched this film years and years and years ago in my late teens and fell in love with Larry Cohen and his, his imagination. Subspecies movies. Suddenly in the Dark, this is a Korean horror film from the late 70s, erotic horror film. Summer of Fear, late 70s TV movie by Wes Craven. Ugh, oh, I gotta show this, man. Suspiria, how glorious is that? Look at that. Oh, I'm doing this with one hand. Oh, oh, there. <laughs> the, uh, uh, just, it's upside down. Okay, there we go. Look at the beautiful, oh, this just blows me away. I have no words. No words. One of my favorites of all time. Top 10 horror movies, period. Swamp Thing, Sweeney Todd, love that musical. The Taking of Deborah Logan, what a great found footage film that I got on Blu-ray. Sold my DVD that is out of print, actually. Got this overseas uh, a while back and still haven't seen it on Blu-ray. That movie terrifies me, though. It's going to be a while since till I <laughs> rewatch that one. Tales from the Hood, grew up watching this with my buddies. Love this movie. Still love it to this day. It tackles issues that not many films were tackling then or have tackled since. Things are changing now, but this is an important film. It's funny, it's horrific, and it's got a killer performance by the caretaker-esque character there by Clarence Williams III. It is awesome. And this cover, one of Scream Factory's best. Teen Wolf Tenebre, another Argento slasher. Excellent. Tetsuo the Iron Man and Body Hammer. Love Tetsuo the Iron Man. Haven't seen Body Hammer, but I need to rectify that soon for a list that I want to do for you guys. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I adore this film. I liked it growing up. It wasn't until I was an adult that I really started to appreciate it. All the Texas Chainsaw movies, uh, I haven't seen these two. Theater of Blood, Them, Giant, F***ing Ants! <laughs> they Live, The Thing. This is out of print now. Limited edition Arrow release, hell yeah. This has a poster, the movie, all that good stuff, and a shit ton of special features, baby. My favorite film of all time. This, you know, uh, Blade Runner. I, I flip-flop my top five around, top ten around all the time, but The Thing, one of my favorites of all time. And right now, my favorite of all time. The Tingler. Vincent Price, one of my favorite Vincent Price films, and one of Castle's best, William Castle. I think it is his best. Great Full Moon stuff, early Full Moon, probably their best film they ever did. Toxic Avenger Collection, Train to Busan, excellent. Trick or Treat, one of the best Halloween movies ever. Troll 1 and 2, Tromeo and Juliet, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, one of the most underrated horror comedies of the last 15, 20 years. Such a great deconstruction of the genre. Tunnel, this is actually a limited edition release. I got this for free, plus shipping. They were doing some sort of a giveaway years ago and I got in on it. I, I This is a limited, yeah, limited to a thousand. So I, I don't know how much this is even going for, you know, these days. Underworld movies, Under the Skin, one of my favorites of the last decade. Underworld movies I still really enjoy. Unfriended blew me away with its format. I love the sequel even more, Dark Web. Uninvited, uh, some more Criterion horror there. And one of my prized possessions, Universal Classic Monsters Complete 30 Film Collection, man. This has pretty much all of the Universal Monster movies. Uh, there are a few that I wish, like the Captive Woman series, there are a few that I wish were included in this set, but uh, this has all of the big ones. Invisible Man, Mummy, Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Dracula, Phantom of the Opera, Frankenstein. This is actually us usually in my room next to my TV because I watch these incessantly. I am so grateful that these are on Blu-ray. What do you guys think of my rat's nest back there? And we are down to the last shelf here. Vamp. Love this little underrated 80s vampire flick. Vampire girl that's more that wacky gore fest 
Japanese stuff that I haven't really gotten into yet. The Visitor Draft House starring Academy Award winning director John Huston in one of the wackiest f***ing science fiction fantasy what the hell is going on movies that I've ever seen. It's wonderful. The Wailing, oh man, South Korean horror movie here that just floored me. It's long, it's a slow burn, it is creepy as hell, and I've never seen a film like it, to be quite honest. So, The Wailing. Warlock movies. This has the three Warlock movies, the first one being my favorite, second one is meh. Third one I haven't seen. It changes uh, Julian Sands to Bruce Payne, though. Um, I like Bruce Payne, but he... Julian Sands, man, he is the Warlock, come on. We Are Still Here, a nice little 80s Fulci-esque Fulci-inspired uh, zombie flick. I really liked We Are Still Here. Whisper in the Darkness, this is by the same people, the H.P. Lovecraft Foundation, that did Call of Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu um, in like a silent film sort of format. Excellent stuff. I think this is done in the same format. White Zombie, another another early, obviously, Bela Lugosi here. This is obviously known as one of the first zombie films ever. Obviously, it's voodoo zombies. Um, at this at this point, they were still only voodoo zombies. We've got The Wicker Man, of course, Wish Upon. I have heard really bad things about, but I want to give it a fair, sh fair shot. The Wishmaster movies. Love the first two. Haven't seen three and four because, again, Divoff, the actor, has changed. Divoff plays the Wishmaster. He is the Wishmaster. Change the actor and my interest wanes. The Witch. Love The Witch, Robert Eggers. Love The Lighthouse even more, honestly, I think. Without warning, Wolf, Wolf Cop, that's a weird movie. Wolf Man, I still think this is a great universal monster movie remake. The Wolf Man, I wish Rick Baker's effects were more, more so in it. He did a ton of work for this movie and they just scrapped a shit ton of it in, in favor of CG, of course. It was cheaper, blah, blah, whatever. Benicio Del Toro, I think, is miscast, but I like the rest of the cast. Um, I, Del, Del Toro does a fine enough job because he's a good actor. But Universal's The Wolfman, the remake here, I think that's the direction that these movies should have gone. But now with Invisible Man, you know what? I'm happy to see where they go because The Invisible Man, Lee wan The Invisible Man blew me away. You got the Woman in Black movies here. Wrong Turn, one through five. I've only seen the first one, but I'm looking forward to checking out this series at some point. Extro, Second Sight release. Oh, such a glorious release. I haven't even cracked this open yet. Extro, 1982. One of the weirdest fucking movies I've ever seen, and it's so incohesive that it it just works for me. I love it. It is dreamlike, nightmarish, and has one of the best practical effects scenes of the 80s. Period. Zombie, Fulci zombie. I, you know, it's so funny. I've had this. I had this on DVD. It was sealed. I kept it sealed. Had it on Blu-ray, they upgraded the Blu-ray, and i just been selling all of these upgrades, and I know it has a three-disc Ultimate Edition now, and it's like, Jesus Christ. So at some point, I'll sell this and upgrade to that, and hopefully call it a day on the zombie. I love zombie, by the way. It's just a pain in the ass with the way they're releasing them. We've got Zombie Holocaust, another uh, Italian zombie flick there. And Zombie Night, a new edition. I don't know anything about this movie. It's by the guy who did um, John Gulliger, the guy who did the F Feast movies. So I like the Feast movie, the first one at least. Want to check out Zombie Night. Zombie Land, of course. And then here we have my Kaiju collection. Yes, this is all the films that I consider Kaiju, at least, that are in my collection. Cloverfield, found footage Kaiju, Kaiju, Dai Majin. It is definitely inspired by Kaiju, but it's more about this giant stone protector, uh, feudal Japan that comes to protect a, a village and stave off evil. It's a really cool movie, and I haven't seen the other two, but Dai Majin, super out of print as well, so good luck finding that one. <laughs> Death Kappa, haven't seen. I've seen a bunch of the Gameda movies. My favorite are still these. These are incredible Kaiju films. Some of the greats, some of the best ever. We've got Godzilla in 84 there, the return of. Godzilla vs. Biollante, another great, great Godzilla film. Now, a lot of these, I have to admit to you guys, I've seen a lot of the older ones, but I haven't seen a lot of these newer ones from the 90s and the 2000s. I've seen I've seen Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, uh, giant monsters all out attack, because it's uh, Shusuke Kaneko, which is the guy that did the Gamera, the three Gamera movies from the 90s. So, moving on from there, I haven't seen a lot of them. I'm just kind of savoring it, honestly, guys. So, Shin Godzilla, same thing haven't seen that. The American remake, which I do enjoy. I don't care what anybody says. This is a fun kaiju movie. It's just not a Godzilla movie. So if you go into it with that mindset, I guarantee you'll have fun. This is a big budget kaiju movie of the likes that we don't have many of. Uh, now, obviously, with the new universe, they are 
you know, doing the giant monster universe here. I still really enjoy Roland Emmerich's Godzilla film from 98. I really do. Got the 2014 Godzilla here. Uh, wasn't a huge fan of this one. It just wasn't enough Godzilla to keep me interested. It's slow. The characters suck. Except for Brian Cranston, but he's killed off in the first 15 minutes. Ugh. Was disappointed by Godzilla 2014. The host, uh, Jun Bong Ho. King Kong, the classic, of course, Digibook edition here, 1933. Oh man, this is just such a magical film. I love it so much. Mighty Joe Young, I haven't seen yet, sadly. King Kong vs. Godzilla, great, great movie. I did a riff review on King Kong Escapes. Not a great movie, but a fun movie nonetheless. Peter Jackson's King Kong remake. I do enjoy this remake quite a bit. I think it's too long, but it is magical. It's fantastical. Really a sweeping epic, honestly. I, I really enjoy this. I just wish like 20-30 minutes was shaved away. It's it's a little over long. Kong Skull Island. This is a relatively new edition with the cool lenticular yeah, you kind of see it. Lenticular uh, slipcover there. Kong Skull Island. I saw it in theaters. Was a big fan. Still am. Solid Kong movie. And we've got Mothra 1, 2, and 3 there. And last, I want to talk about, but certainly not least, The Lost World 1925. This is incredible to have on Blu-ray by Flickr Alley. Yet again, knocking it out of the park. This restoration is incredible. As good as it's going to get for a film that's nearly 100 years old, I was blown away. Way. The film does have some racism, some blackface that, you know, it, it is of its time. It's not excusable. It does make me cringe like crazy, but that's the only part of the film that I dislike. Everything else about this film is pure movie magic. I just want to thank you all for checking out my updated horror Blu-ray collection overview here for 2020. I want to try to do this yearly because I do constantly pick up movies throughout the year, obviously. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more videos like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell for notifications. I'd love to know what your favorite piece in the collection behind me is. So feel free to leave that down in the comments below and we'll get a little discussion. Rollin'. Anyway, guys, I will see you next time. Board Cyborg, out. Ah!